Radiant energy from the sun warms the Earth, and the Earth radiates energy back to space. But water vapor and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere absorb much of this outgoing radiation. With no carbon dioxide, the Earth would cool and the oceans would freeze. What happens if you increase the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? Over 100 years ago, the Swedish scientist Svante Arrhenius showed that this was apt to change the climate. This isn't surprising. Carbon dioxide keeps the Earth warm, so more carbon dioxide should lead to a warmer Earth. Arrhenius, who lived in a cold northern climate, thought that this warming would be a good thing. Those in hot, dry climates, which are likely to become hotter and drier, would have a different view. So as we've seen, the sun shines on the Earth and the Earth radiates energy back to space. Hot air rises and evaporating water carries energy upward as well, but there's more to the story. The Earth has hot spots and cold spots, and energy would like to move from the hot spots to the cold spots. But there's a problem. Oh no! As we'll see. Now, first off, I want to start with this thing, and we'll, then we'll move it out of the way. We've let the light shine on us while we've been taking a break. Look at the fog in the tank now. Yeah. I can really see it. Oh yeah. Is it just on the sides, or is it in the air? It's in the air as well. It's completely full of water vapor, and then it hits the sides. It condenses and makes little droplets of water, which is what we see. It looks foggy, and that's actually little droplets of water over there. So you're extremely perceptive to say it's in the air as well. Talk on YouTube. You are good. Now, we're gonna use this as a sun simulation. And then we have a simulation of the Earth over there, a ball, and it's painted with the same black paint that makes the colors change. What I'm gonna do is this. Here comes the sunlight, shining in and hitting the sphere, and I'm gonna rotate it. You see the colors change? Yeah. And tell me where they're changing. In the middle. In the middle. Oh, and if this was the Earth, they'd be changing at? The equator. The equator. And so look, as I'm spinning this thing here, look what happens. It's gotten very colorful around the middle, but not so colorful. Like around the top and the bottom? On the top and the bottom. If that was the Earth, this would be? The poles. The poles. So it's warm at the equator and it's cold at the poles. And it just has to do with this. When the light comes out, it's hitting this full on. But here, it's kind of like hitting at an angle. Oh, and, it, and so it, this doesn't get as much light as this does. Is that why in some months, like, sometimes it's all the way, like, light all day? Yes. Or dark all day? Oh, yeah, because the Earth actually kind of does like this. It changes its angle. Mm -hmm. And then in the summertime, it's like this. And then in the summertime, what ends up happening is the Earth is rotating like this. And it hits more in the Exactly. It hits more like the North Pole, and so, look, it gets warmer in the North than in the South. And how about in the wintertime? It's pretty cold. It's cold and it's because it's tipped like this. And then the North Pole gets cold and the South Pole. It's warm. Does that mean the equator changes? Spots? The equator always stays about the same. The equator is always here in the middle. The equator is always staying toasty. Mm -hmm. And the poles are alternately warmer and colder, kind of depending on our direction of the sun. So we do have that seasonal change. But right now I want to think about this. The Earth gets warm in the center and it's cold at the poles. So what would the Earth would like to do this. It would like to take that warmth from the equator and move it up to the poles. Energy wants to go from where it's warm to where it's cold. You know that. Energy flows from where it's hot to where it's cold. It would like to do that, but there's a problem. 